Fautagu Yeo Scott's The Celtic Podcast. Kimra Ha Huladunya, how is everyone? On today's show in Fekimich Beck and Gallic, that's Let's Try Little Gallic. Frustrated with Gallic? In Celtic history? The Wizard and his Pack with the Devil. In everyday Celtic ways. We're going to hear music from Capricaley, Robin Lang, Rachel Sermani, Tidelines, and Really Jiggered, and in History of Ireland. In 1542, the Irish Parliament passes the Crown of Ireland Act, and it established a kingdom of Ireland to be ruled by Henry VIII and his successors. There was a collective fuck you from Ireland. <laughs> if you're already a subscriber to the E. Old Scott YouTube channel and enjoy the variety of interesting videos and podcasts that we produce weekly, then you should join us on the E. Old Scott Facebook group. Not only do you get all the great videos you already enjoy, but so much more. Come and connect with your Celtic community here on Ye Old Scott Facebook group. Learn the history of Gaelic songs as you learn to sing them. Gaelic and English lyrics are provided to give you a deeper understanding of the song, to guide you when you're learning, or just sit back and enjoy these beautiful songs. All right, welcome to the Gaelic music video. And this one today is on um, Bolakel Bat. Now the woman or girl in this, is the subject of this song is uh, she's heart sick, whereas she puts it, "Gurachin a galar angrai," which means "What a deadly sickness is love." Now she pines for a fair-haired young man who is handsome, of course. She deeply laments, laments for him and wishes to give him her hand, but alas, she is, in her words, alone without you, lamenting on a knoll. Man, I feel for that woman. All right, remember the Gaelic's on top, the English is on the bottom, so get ready for this wonderful song by, arranged by Capricaley. Enjoy. Let's go, no, 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 
Scottish Gaelic is native to the Gales of Scotland. Scottish Gaelic developed out of the Old Irish, and learning this beautiful language can be a direct link to your Gaelic ancestors. Follow along in Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, and like I said, let's try a little Gaelic. Frustrated with Gaelic? An easy way to keep the Scottish Gaelic language alive is to keep it in your daily vocabulary. Little bits here and there to let those around you know how important it is to you. This is especially important if you have small children. They will have the benefits of learning another language and share a common link with you and your heritage. All right, we're going to start off with the months. Um, Fulach, January, and Gelen, February. Um, March, March, and Giblin, April, and Caton, May. An Tokvias, June, An Tluker, July, An Lunastil, August, An Tolton, September, An Daver, October, An Tavin, November, An Dulak, December. All right, but along with the months, we have the seasons too. And we're going to start off with winter, Gaurag, spring, Erek, summer, Sarag, and autumn, Thur. That's the winter, and Gaurag, the spring, and Charak, the summer, and Sarag, and the, the autumn or the fall, um, um, Fura. Celtic history brings you the tales of the land, castles, warriors, heroes, legends, and customs that have created the rich, vibrant, and sometimes strange and wonderful history of the Celtic world. Love Scotland's glens and whatever else we lose, leave us our glens, our glorious glens. Oh, our mountains are grand, Ben Loman, Ben Nevis, too. You can keep all these bends, just leave us our glens. Glen Fiddich. Glen Dronach, Glen Livet, Glen Grant Can you do without them? If you must know, I can't Put a drop in a glass of Glen Spey or Glen Drotter It's a hell of a wonderful way to drink water I would willingly lose Our culture or most of it Including that mess Called Fool Highland Dress With a whole ethnic bit We haggis on Hogmanay I would gladly dispense But leave us our glens Glen Fiddich, Glen Dronach, Glen Levitt, Glen Fall I once knew a man, he'd sampled them all Glen Isla, Glen Yugi, Glen Kinchy, that's plenty he looked 65, in fact he was 20 
take our Highland Scottish, our marches, strathbays, and reels. Take our old Scottish waltz, but leave us our malts. Remove, if you will, our ladies' conveniences and our gentlemen's. Just leave us our glen. Glen Fiddich, Glen Dronach, and last week Glen Fine was rare at communion when we ran out the wine. Glen Isla, Glen Yugi, Glen Kinshi, Glen Morangy, I prefer it to Quantro, which I find too orangy. And is there a Scot whose views of priority? When laid on the line, are different from mine. Take our jobs, take our homes, take anything else you will. Take family and friends, but leave us our glens. Glen Fiddich, Glen Dronach, Glen Levitt, Glen Grant. Can you do without them? If you must know, I can't. Put a drop in a glass of Glen Spey or Glen Drotter It's a hell of a wonderful way to drink water The Wizard and His Pack with the Devil The Wizard of Gordonston looked behind him The Devil's Black Stallion was gaining on him The Hellhound snapping at his heels of the Wizard's horse in one last desperate attempt, the wizard pressed his heels into the horse's flank as hard as he could. The beast charged forward, snorting and whinnying as it galloped through the thunder, howling winter winds, racing along with reckless abandon. If he could only reach the consecrated ground of Bernie Kirk, it was in sight. He could make it. He had to make it. He was almost there. Almost. Today... Gordonston is more famous as the exclusive private school in Moray, which can boast an alumni such as Prince Philip and his son, Prince Charles. However, in the 1600s, its claim to fame was its somewhat eccentric owner, Sir Robert Gordon, 3rd Baronet of Gordonston, from 1647 to 1704. He was a scholar and a scientist, particularly skilled in the fields of chemistry and mechanics. As a result, he entered into a long correspondence with the famous natural philosopher, physicist, and chemist Robert Boyle. The discoverer of Boyle's Law, which relates to gas in a cylinder or a container. Now, Sir Robert Boyle became a bit of a favorite with King James, who took a keen interest in his inventions, made him a gentleman of the household. He was knighted in 1673, then... On the 3rd of February, 1686, he was elected Fellow of the Royal Society, joining the ranks of other eminent scientists, including Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Michael Faraday, Ernest Rutherford, Albert Einstein, Francis Crick, and more recently, Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk. The following year, he appeared before the Royal Society by the King's command and presented a little odd work entitled Receipt to Cure Mad Dogs or Men or Beasts Bitten by Mad Dogs. But perhaps he is best known for the notoriety he achieved as Sir Robert the Warlock. All right. As the early modern era of history dawned in Scotland, the boundaries between chemistry and alchemy are not as clear as they are now. Chemistry was the science which emerged from the older alchemy, which in turn was a fusion of science, philosophy, and mysticism. Scotland was on the cusp of the Age of Enlightenment, but people were still bound by superstition and fear of the unknown. This was also the height of the Scottish Witch Trials. The Scottish Witchcraft Act of 1563, introduced during the reign of Queen Mary of Scots, made witchcraft, sorcery, and necromancy and the consulting with witches a capital crime. The belief was that witches derived their supernatural powers by giving up their souls to Satan. Thus, when Robert returned from overseas with all his newfangled ideas and wealth of knowledge, he was viewed with suspicion. 
there could only be one explanation, and that would be that Robert was a wizard. Rumors began to fly. The wizard of Gordonston had given himself away to gain more knowledge, meaning he had sold his soul to the devil for a period of 30 years for an understanding of science. He conducted his experiments in a building known as the Round Square, a perfectly round building next to his mansion. The roundhouse was connected to Sculptor's Cave. This cave was rumored to be filled with the skulls of children. Here he was said to carry out his nefarious deeds, like dancing naked with women and playing cards with the devil, in a tale reminiscent of that of General Bloody Tam Daliel. And the final damning proof that he had entered into a pact with the devil? He had no shadow. It was only his wealth and high connections that spared him from the witch pricker's needle and the horrors of a witch trial. His thirty years came to an end in November 1704. The night before his debt was due, the devil appeared to him to establish his claim upon his soul. The devil told him that on the morrow evening at midnight he would come back for his soul. But Sir Robert was not about to go willingly. He enlisted the help of the minister to sit with him and ward off the devil. While they awaited in the round square, Sir Robert explained that he had built the house round so that the devil could not corner him. As midnight approached, the winds howled and lightning struck. The minister fled in terror and urged Robert to do the same, saying that he should go to the nearest consecrated ground at Burney Kirk. But this was somewhat odd, as Burney is to the south of Elgin, and the churches of Lousymouth, Dufus, and Elgin were closer to Gordonston. Maybe the minister was just trying to give the devil his due. Robert mounted his horse and fled into the night. It soon became apparent that the devil was in hot pursuit on his black stallion. Nor was he alone, for he came with an entourage of hellhounds. As Robert approached Bernie Kirk, the hounds attacked, sinking their teeth into the poor horse's rump. In agony, the horse threw its rider, who, as a result, broke his neck. The hounds began to devour the horse, and the devil wailed in horror. Sir Robert, the wizard of Gordonston, had been thrown over the kirk's wall and lay dead within the grounds of the kirk. The devil was unable to gather his prize and cried out into the night in anger for all to hear. Sir Robert's body was recovered at daylight and taken to Elgin. It is said that the night before his funeral, his body disappeared and a coffin of bricks was buried in its place. But, like any good tale about the devil, there's a rhyme that little children sing from time to time, and it goes. Thus the old rhyme began. Oh, a hersna heard that old man renown, the wizard Sir Robert of Gordonstown, the wisest of warlocks, the more sheer shale, the despot of doofus and friend of the devil. Ooh. In reality, Sir Robert died in his bed in 1704. Afterwards, his widow erected the Michael Kirk on the, the estate grounds as a mausoleum. This tale reminds us that as enlightenment dawned upon the world, superstition still emerged to claim one last victim that was looked on with suspicion and maligned for daring to discover the secrets of this world, an act so dubious and almost heretical for sure. This wave to see Do you think that we could sail out in the night? We must let no one know. So maybe if we go, we'll go unseen. I'll sing below the ripples, eat the sea 
shells of the storm and we'll swim knowing they can't touch us we'll swim knowing they can't touch us Stop the rumored lies. Do you think that we could venture to the light? I'd even play my violin, scratching on the strings of laughing joy. I don't want to be that crashing wave, but I'll. Everyday Celtic Ways brings you the mythology, traditions, and customs that have created a unique and personal culture that still affects those that are Celtic and those that just love the Celtic world. stood up in front of you. This is the crucial part of this. It's called the pick. A good pick is key to success of the entire caber toss. Once you've picked the caber, gaining balance, keeping the caber tucked in between your shoulder and your head, once you've gained balance, then it's time for the, for the run. The reason why we run is to get some forward momentum on the caber so that when we put all we got into it, turn it, that forward momentum will keep it going and turning over. Notice the judge standing right behind the athlete. Now he's the one who decides after your caper has turned what your score is based on a clock face, 12 o'clock being perfect, all the way to 3 o'clock or over to 9 o'clock. And once you see that caper break 90 degrees and fall to the ground, you're happy as can be. This particular caber, 17 and a half feet long, 125 pounds. Here's a couple examples of a perfect 
caper toss. Now that's how it's done. Good 
Leva Harrison. Now remember to check out my YouTube channel. It's got Celtic music, podcasts, Gaelic language, Gaelic song, Celtic history videos, plus lots more. And my Facebook group where you can give me your inputs and insights on all things Celtic. Goodbye, Apple Baby. Marsha Weave. But I'm going to let you go with a song.